Hey guys, welcome back to Trusted Technology. Today we'll talk about why killer robots exist and why we need to ban them. Let's head into it. A chilling future that some had said might not arrive for many years to come is, in fact, already here. According to a recent UN report, a drone airstrike in Libya from the spring of 2020 made against Libyan National Army forces by Turkish-made STM Cargo 2 drones on behalf of Libya's government of national accord was conducted by weapon systems with no known humans in the loop. In so many words, the red line of autonomous targeting of humans has now been crossed. To the best of our knowledge, this official United Nations reporting marks the first documented use case of lethal autonomous weapon system, akin to what has elsewhere been called a slaughter bot. We believe this is a landmark moment. Civil society organizations, such as ours, had previously advocated for a preemptive treaty prohibiting the development and use of lethal autonomous weapons, much as blinding weapons were preemptively banned in 1998. The window for preemption is now passed, but the need for a treaty is more urgent than ever. The STM Cargo 2 is a flying quadcopter that weighs a mere 7 kilograms and is being mass-produced. Capable of fully autonomous targeting, can form swarms, remains fully operational when GPS and radio links are jammed, and is equipped with facial recognition software to target humans. In other words, it's a slaughter bot. The UN report notes, logistics convoys and retreating were subsequently hunted down and remotely engaged by the unmanned combat aerial vehicles or the lethal autonomous weapon systems, such as the STM Cargo 2 and other loitering munitions. The lethal autonomous weapon systems were programmed to attack targets without requiring data connectivity between the operator and the munition. Annex 30 of the report depicts photographic evidence of the downed STM Cargo 2 system. In a previous effort to identify consensus areas for prohibition, we brought together experts with a range of views on lethal autonomous weapons to brainstorm a way forward. We published the agreed findings in A Path Towards Reasonable Autonomous Weapons Regulation, which suggested a time limited moratorium on the development, deployment, transfer, and use of anti-personal lethal autonomous weapon systems as a first and absolute minimum step for regulation. A recent position statement from the International Committee of the Red Cross on Autonomous Weapon Systems concurs. This Slaughterbots question. In 2017, the Future of Life Institute, which we represent, released a nearly 8-minute long video titled Slaughterbots, which was viewed by an estimated 75 million people online, dramatizing the dangers of lethal autonomous weapons. At the time of release, the video received both praise and criticism. Pulse Cars December 2017 IEEE Spectrum article, Why You Should Fear Slaughterbots, argued that Slaughterbots was very much science fiction and a piece of propaganda. At a November 17 meeting about lethal autonomous weapons in Geneva, Switzerland, the Russian ambassador to the UN also reportedly dismissed it, saying that such concerns were 25 or 30 years in the future. We addressed these critiques in our piece, also for Spectrum, titled Why You Should Fear Slaughterbots. Bots, a response. Now less than four years later, reality has made the case for us. The age of slaughterbots appears to have begun. We produce slaughterbots to educate the public and policymakers alike about the potential imminent dangers of small, cheap, and ubiquitous lethal autonomous weapon systems beyond the moral issue of handing over decisions over life and death to algorithms. The video pointed out that autonomous weapons will inevitably turn into weapons of mass destruction precisely because they require no human supervision and can therefore be deployed in vast numbers. Furthermore, like small arms, autonomous weaponized drones will proliferate easily on the international arms market. As as the Slaughterbots video's epilogue explained, all the component technologies were already available and we expected militaries to start deploying such weapons very soon. That prediction was essentially correct. The past few years have seen a series of media reports about military testing on ever larger drone swarms and battlefield use of weapons with increasingly autonomous functions as the price of air superiority has gone down dramatically. While the system used in Azerbaijan are arguably a software update, what do you think about killer robots? Should they get banned? Let us know in the comment section. This brings us to the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit like if you did. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any of our videos in the future. Also, watch the two videos that are on your screen because I'm sure you'll love them. With that, I'll see you in the next video.